Good morning. We're Abundant Life Fellowship Church from Franklin, Pennsylvania, and we welcome you today uh, as you, I, I pray that you receive from this word today. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, the word says, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. He makes all grace. See, this word all, we, we, we read it, but do we get it? He makes all grace abound toward you. That you always, that means all the time, every day, without fail, having all sufficiency in all things. It, it is, you should have sufficiency for anything that you need to do. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter you know, what it involves. It doesn't matter whether it, it, it's a bill that you need to pay or a relationship that needs to be fixed. It doesn't matter. It's all sufficiency in all things. And, and we, we, we get there, we get there when we do what is said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that if we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and become righteous in ourselves because of, of, of his righteousness, his blood has made us righteous then all these things will be added unto you. What things? Everything you need that pertains to life and godliness. Everything. There's, there's nothing that, that won't be added unto you. Now I want to go to, to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 17. And we're going to read uh, about this, this Tishbite guy by the name of Elijah. First Kings chapter 17, starting with the first verse, down through verse 16. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, who was the king at the time, as the Lord of God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Well, you know, that's a pretty bold statement to make to the king, that you're, you're going to be the cause of the drought. But... See, it wasn't it wasn't Elijah's own idea. It was God's idea because Israel had had strayed away from God, and they were being punished. And so now here here's Elijah, who also is going to have to experience the drought. Sometimes we have droughts in our own lives. Sometimes they last for years, just as this one lasted for three and a half years. Sometimes the, the drought, you know, the drought becomes a, a, a major problem. I mean, think about, think about the, um, what they called the Great Depression. Think about the recession that we're in right now. You say, well, P P Pastor, you know, we, we still have stuff yeah but we're in a recession i mean look at the prices of things you, you, you know you can't get out hardly out of the grocery store for less than a hundred dollars so the lord now you see elijah was his servant and he served god so the verse two says the word of the lord came to him saying get away from here and turn eastward 
and hide by the brook Sherith, which flows into the Jordan. And it shall be that you shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. Well, glory to God. I, I know what ravens eat. You know, mostly roadkill anymore. So I, I, I'm kind of curious as to what poor old Elijah had to eat. But he had food and he had water. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Sherith, which flows into the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And it happened after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord said to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Now, you know, this is going from bad to worse. And you say, well, why is that? He's going to be provided for. Widow, widows are the poorest people in town in those days. They had nothing. You know, there wasn't Social Security left from the husband or or uh, you know, uh, retirement benefits. No. When the husband died, the widow became the poorest. So that's why we're told to take care of the widows and the orphans. Why? They didn't have anything. And now he's sending Elijah to the poorest lady in town. I mean, it's... It, 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 he was getting pretty used to having the ravens bring him food and the, the, the drinking water out of the brook. So he arose, he listened to God, and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in her hand. Well, that's, you know, that that's pretty forward of him to say, you know, bring me water and bring me food. When he didn't know this lady from, from anybody, he just, you know, hey, that's like walking up to somebody on the street and saying, Hey, I want water and food. Will you go get it for me? So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. So she had given up. Have you ever given up? You know, the Lord spoke to me, oh goodness, it's been at least a year ago. And said something that at the time I didn't even understand why he said it. But now I do. He said, don't ever, 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 ever give up. So I, you know, I'm not willing to give up. And I persevere on things. So Elijah, in verse 13, said to her, don't fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour <coughs> shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to Elijah. Now I'm telling you today, I, I get I get emails from these uh, people they call preppers that are... You know, they're preparing for the worst. And, you know, you got to have in a 100-pound bag of beans and a 100-pound bag of rice and and uh, make sure you have 
lots of uh, drinking water set aside because everything's going to fall apart and and you're not going to have food you're not going to have water <coughs> i knew i knew a young man he's since gone on to be with the lord but um my dad had some some barrels 55 gallon barrels and this young man came to him one day and he said, uh, sir, he said, could I buy some of those barrels? And of course my dad said, yes, because he didn't know what to do with them in the first place. He said, what are you going to do with them? And the guy said, well, I'm going to wash them all out, make sure they're nice and clean. And then I'm going to fill them up with wheat and oats and grain and I'm going to bury them. And Dad said, why are you going to do that? And he said, well, because all hell is going to break loose on the earth. And I want to make sure that I have enough food for my family. See, people are like that. But I'm telling you right now, your jar of oil and your barrel of flour or whatever, or whatever you keep it in, will not run dry if you listen to the word of the Lord. I mean, if he has to, he can still send ravens to bring you food. If he has to, he, he will still provide manna in your backyard. God will protect his people. Just, I mean, Israel, look at all the... The, the the things that Israel did in, during the Exodus. And God had told them, you're not going to get into the, you know, you're not going to live to get to the promised land. And yet, yet, their clothes didn't wear out, their shoes didn't wear out, and the Bible says there was not a feeble one among them. You know, it didn't matter what their age was. They they went through the Exodus full of complaining, full of, full of griping and grumbling and, and, you know, making God upset. I mean, he got, God got mad enough one day. He said to Moses, hey, you know, I'll tell you what, let's, let's just get rid of this whole crowd and we'll start over again with you. And Moses had to talk God out of it. And and so, but yet God provided manna every morning. The people could go out and they'd gather the manna. They had plenty of food for the day. He when they griped about manna because hey we're you know, we're tired of eating bread, he provided quail, so that they could have you know chicken dinners. They could use the manna, I suppose, to stuff the, the quail. You know, I, I mean, come on. God took care of his people. He always has. He always will. He, he has, you know, I mean, this was a time of, of great lack in Israel. It was... You know, it was an, an Israeli, Israeli dust bowl because of the sins of the land. And, and here's Elijah, the prophet. He's telling this lady, don't fear. Well, she thought she was going to die. And he asked her for her last meal. That man, I'll tell you what, that takes some that takes some chutzpah to ask somebody for their last meal. But once she obeyed God through the prophet, she had ample provision throughout the drought. I mean, we're not gonna turn there, but but there there's another story in, in Kings where the the prophet went to the lady and her sons were going to be sold into slavery. And he said, 
You go to all your neighbors and you get every jug, every jar, every bucket, every barrel, everything you can get your hands on and bring it home. And then you start pouring oil out of your little your little jar of oil. You start pouring it into those barrels and buckets. Well, you know, there probably wasn't in that jar one drop for each bucket. But as she started pouring, the oil filled the containers. She had a little jar in her hand. But when she started pouring it into the to the barrel, it filled the barrel. And when she started pouring it into the bucket, it filled the bucket. The same God that can multiply that oil, the same God that can multiply that flour for this, this widow we just talked about in Zarephath, the same God that provided that food for the prophet alongside this brook, the same God is the one you serve today. And he has never changed. And he will never change. So he will always provide enough for you to have enough for yourself, ample, that means plenty. He will always provide ample and enough that you can help somebody else. You know, every day when I park my car and go into work, I walk past a, a little box that's hanging on the wall. It's about two feet wide and three feet high. And it's full of food. Cans of this and cans of that and, and bags of uh, pasta and just all kinds of food. And it says if you need some, take it. And if you have more than enough, put some in. And I, I keep thinking to myself as I go by that every day, you know. And once in a while I stop just, just looking through the glass to see what's in there. And I, I keep thinking, you know, well, you know, I'm going to put this in or I'm going to put that in. Because God's given me enough. And, and I want to bless somebody else. So I'm going to stick some in there. But God won't always end the drought. But he will end your lack. The recession might keep going on. I don't know. Our government has stuff so messed up that, that, that we are in a recession. We might go into a depression. I don't know. God won't always end the drought, but he'll end your lack. I mean, if you read the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, the first two verses, just the first two verses, it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth, and all, <coughs> all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. We saw it work in the life of Elijah. Elijah obeyed God and the blessings came on him. He had food to eat when people were dying from hunger. He had water to drink when people were dying of thirst. He went and did what God told him to do, even though it did not make sense to his natural mind. I mean, when, you know, when God speaks to you to go to the poorest person in town and ask them for their last meal, that does not make sense. It does not compute. 
but it worked. See, and it will still work because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It will not. It, it will not change because God will not change. I mean, Psalm chapter twenty-three, verse five: "You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies." You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. In the presence of of of, of all the the naysayers and and people that are that are complaining about the food and the, uh, complaining about the the gas prices and complaining about this and that and the other thing. All those people, and in the presence of my enemies, I'll have plenty. If, if I follow verse 1 of chapter, of, of Psalm chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I'll follow him. I'll do what he says. Not what I think. You know, Elijah could not have thought this out in his own mind. That by going and living in a cave, that he would have more than enough. You know, when he went to get a drink of water from the brook, the brook kept flowing. It kept flowing. There was more than enough to give him enough water. When he when he went to Zarephath, you know, there was more than enough in the barrel in the jar. It, the, the, the flour kept coming. The, 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 the oil kept flowing. Why? Because he accepted the Lord as his shepherd. He followed the voice of the shepherd. And there was more than enough. That's why this says my cup runs over. I'll have more than enough. He prepares that table for us in the presence of our enemies. And there's more than enough. You say, well, Pastor, you know, right now my bank account says zero and my bills say lots. I'm telling you today, if you trust God, he'll provide. You know, I, I'm planning on making at least two mission trips this year. I'm planning on, I, I've got two planned. One to Brazil in May, one to Dominican Republic in October. You say, well, do you have the money for your plane tickets? No, not yet. But my God shall provide all that I need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And I will have more than enough. I will have enough to be able to bless the people in the places I go. Well, how are you going to get that, Pastor? I don't know. You know, that's not my problem. My, my, my job is to listen to God and do what he says. Amen. Now, there is a, a spirit of poverty, a spirit of lack. And we have to break that spirit of lack. You know, there, there are areas uh, of our country that there is extreme poverty. Uh, you know, I know, I know people that, that go on, on mission trips to uh, some of the hills and hollows, they call it, of, of Kentucky and in, 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 in the south where people were, I mean, they live in shanties, shacks, that are about to fall down, and they they have extreme poverty. And you see that in our cities. There are, there are areas of our cities. I remember um, New York City, one of the most prosperous cities in the world. 
And we went to New York City and we went through an area where the buildings were burned out. I mean, falling down. And you look at this building and you see little faces looking out the window at you. And they, these people lived in that extreme poverty. The most, one of the most prosperous cities in the world. And, and here are these people living in this extreme poverty. I'm telling you, there, there is a, a, a spirit of poverty, and, and, and that spirit wants to keep you in poverty. He wants to make sure that you don't have enough for yourself, let alone for anybody else. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take a little sidetrack here. When God gives to you, give back. Why? Give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will men give to your bosom. In other words, to your pockets. Okay? Always make sure you give back. Okay, back to where we're going here. See, God has a plan. He has a plan, and it, it, it might involve ravens and, and widows. I don't know. But he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. God has thoughts about you. He thinks about you higher than anything else he loves you so much that you are on his mind all the time. And he wants you to be at peace. He wants you to have enough. He wants you to have a good future. He wants you to have hope. I read in the newspaper about the rash of suicides, particularly among young people. Suicide. Why? They've lost all hope. Uh, my son's best friend committed suicide. He lost all hope. Why? Well, because he broke up with his girlfriend. And he, he, and he lost all hope. Folks, we have to have hope. And God's word should give us hope. God has never allowed his people to go without. I mean, here's Israel wandering through the desert. You know, the Bible calls it wilderness. But it, in reality, it's a desert. And they're wandering through the desert. And God brought water for them out of a rock. Enough water that, that it turned into a river. I mean, come on. It, it, it watered a million people plus, plus all their animals. There was more than enough. And he did it more than once. Even though the people were whining and complaining, God still provided more than enough. The manna was more than enough. The quail were more than enough. God will always provide for those who walk out his plan. It takes hearing and obeying God to find the right plan. And these spirits of poverty and lack, they'll attempt to stop you from doing God's plan. They'll attempt. They'll cause you to be selfish and try to hoard things. Oh, I got to... I got to gather in everything. I can't let anybody know what I have. I'm just going to gather it all in. 
and and I'm going to hide it, and, and and I'll have more than enough. No, you'll you'll lose everything if you do that. Selfishness selfishness will will always try to stop you in a time of lack. People who were selfish during the Great Depression died. People who were selfish in in uh, all through the Word of God died. But those who obeyed God had more than enough. You know, Galatians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. Talks about the the things that that these spirits will bring in idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresy envy murder drunkenness revelries and the like of which I tell you beforehand just as I also told you in time past those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God say well I never killed anybody no but were you envious when your neighbor got a new car and you had an old clunker Who do you hate? Who are you fighting with? Who are you jealous of? Do you tend to get very angry and, 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 and have outbursts? Do you have selfish ambitions? You know, I, I talked to a man yesterday, and and he's talking about, well, I have to go to a funeral today. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, a very good friend of mine died, and we're all going to go get drunk tonight to to because it should be a celebration, right, of of a life, not not crying and complaining, so we're all going to go get drunk. Well, that sounds like a revelry to me. And see, that's what God doesn't want us to do. He wants us to be obedient to do his word. And then he'll provide for us. You know, you, you have to live by faith. We're, we're in a time right now when when you have to live by faith. You know, what's your faith in? I, I have a sermon that I preached in the past, and then somewhere I have the notes, about negative faith. Oh, you know, people say, well, I know I'm going to get sick. That's negative faith. And you'll get sick because you have faith that you're going to get sick. Well, I, I, had, I heard a lady one day, and I had to correct her. She said, well, my mother died of cancer. My aunt died of cancer. I'll probably have cancer, too. Why would you even have that kind of faith? Anybody I ever met with cancer didn't want it. They wanted to be healed. People say, well, God gave it that to them to, to uh, teach them a lesson. Baloney. Baloney. I mean, you know, when your child kicks the cat, do you cut his foot off? Well, no, I wouldn't do that. I might, I might, you know, yell at him, but I wouldn't cut his foot off. Well, that's what you're saying God does. I, I, folks, you got to have, 
is your faith in lack or is your faith in plenty? My faith is in plenty. See, Romans chapter 1, verse 17, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The Bible says, if you don't have faith, you can't please God. So what's your faith in? Is it in lack or is it in plenty? And Josh, let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 18, and we're going to finish this story about Elijah. Elijah, first, starting with verse 41, 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 41 through 46. Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat, and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. Well, was it raining? No, it wasn't raining. It hadn't rained in, in three and a half years. And he's telling Elijah, well, go, or Ahab, go eat and drink, because it's going to rain. What do you mean, Elijah? There's not a cloud in the sky. It's just another hot day in Israel. Just another dry day. Go eat and drink, Ahab. So Ahab was smart enough to listen. He went up to eat and drink. And Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel, and he bowed down on the ground, put his face between his knees, and said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went and looked and said, There's nothing. There's not a cloud in the sky, Elijah. And seven times he said, go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there's a cloud as small as a man, man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Well, but it's, but it, but it's not raining. Get your chariot. Start toward it, uh, Jezreel, because it's going to rain. Meanwhile, the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. Then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. He girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. He he outran a chariot drawn by horses. He had faith that it was going to rain. He he knew in his spirit it's fixing to rain, and he's telling the king it's going to rain. I, I don't see any rain. It doesn't matter. It's going to rain. And he kept sending that, that, that servant out. Go look, go look, go look. And I'm sure the servant's thinking, ah, oh, come on, come on, Elijah. I've been looking, there's nothing there. Go look again. There's nothing there. Oh, wait a minute. Now I see a little bit of a cloud. Run, it's gonna rain. It's just a little cloud. It's no bigger than a man's hand. That's all the bigger this cloud was. It's no bigger than that. Run! It's going to rain! See, he had faith before he saw anything. Do you understand? You have to have faith before you see anything. Do I have faith that God's going to provide for me? Yes. Do I see the provision? Not yet. I say not yet because I have faith that it's coming. It is coming. And you have to have that kind of faith. You have to trust God before you actually see it. That's what faith's all about. See, faith is the 
the substance of things not seen. It is an actual substance. It's, it's like air. I can't see air. But without it, I'd be dead. You know, I breathe in air. And I exhale air. And every breath I take, it, there's air. I can't see it. Now, last night we had strong winds. You can see what they did. I could not see the wind. But I could see the effects. And it, it's the same way with faith. You can't see it, but you can see the effects. You can see people being blessed. You can see people being destroyed, depending on where their faith is at. You can see the effects of positive faith and negative faith. Have positive faith. Be positive that you know that my God shall provide all my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Have faith that what the word of God says is true. The first scripture that we read today. Have faith that God will give me so much that I have more than enough and I can give it away. Because I'm going to tell you something. God said this back in the 8th chapter of Genesis, verse 22. Don't ever forget this verse. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. If you're planting, you will harvest. Whatever seed you plant, you will harvest in abundance. If you put a kernel of corn in the ground, the stalk comes up. And on that stalk grows an ear of corn. And there are 120 kernels of corn on that. You just reaped a harvest from the seed you planted. If you plant seed in somebody's life, if you give them what it is they need, and plant a seed, you will reap a harvest of plenty. My father, when he was alive, he was a very giving man, and he gave to people. And at the time he died, he had four freezers full of meat. Why? Because God gave to him like I, I have never seen another person reap a harvest like my dad did. Now, I'm, there, I'm sure there are other people out there that reap the same kind of harvest, but I, I don't know them. But I know that, that he just gave and gave and gave. And his, his mantra, if you will, was you can't outgive God. And he would give and give and give, and he would receive and receive and receive. And why? Seed time and harvest. It always works. Yes, we just went through winter. Thank you, Jesus, it was a mild winter, but we just went through winter. But summer's coming. You know, the, the little flowers are popping up through the ground. The buds are coming on the trees. Summer's coming. It's going to get dark tonight. But tomorrow morning, the light's going to come again. See, it's not going to stop. You might think it's going to stop. You might think that everything just doesn't work. It works if you will have faith that it's going to work. You have to trust God. Above everything else, you have to trust God.
there are people who I have completely trust. If they say something, you know it's going to happen. But I trust God more than I trust them. Why? Because he is my shepherd and I shall not want. And he will prepare that table before me in the presence of my enemies. He will make sure my cup runs over. He will make sure that I always have more than enough. Why not trust him? He is a loving father. Make him your shepherd. Trust him with everything. And expect to receive Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that, that because of your sacrifice, that we have been adopted into the family. And that we have a Father who always provides more than enough. I just thank you and I praise you, Lord God, for meeting every need we have according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And that as we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all the things we need, everything we need that pertains to life and godliness, will be given to us. And as we give, it will be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It'll be given back to us. So I just thank you and I praise you. I thank you and I praise you and I have faith that you are going to meet every need we have. In Jesus' name, amen.